So we're going to continue our presentations on uh, uh, analysis of the economy and the stock market. So um, this is uh, a new topic for some of you. We've talked about economics, we've talked about investments. Now we're going to try to correlate the two. Um, here we're going to go, going to go over this agenda, uh, the economy and the stock market, the business cycle, the stock market and the business cycle, some of the factors uh, other than this, the business cycle that affect the economy and forecasting changes if it's all, at all possible. Uh, so just a reminder, um, one of the biggest measurements of economic activity is GDP. GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product uh, and you notice G plus C plus I and then plus X minus M uh, in the brackets. Uh, G in this case stands for government spending, C stands for consumption, and I is investments. X minus M is of course um, exports minus imports. One um, interesting fact, uh, uh, interesting way of uh, interpreting this is also, um, it is, I'm just going to talk about that. Um, so G, which is government spending, is technically the job of econo economists and uh, economic theories try to come out, uh, come up with different, va uh, different ways of uh, uh, government spending. C, which is consumption, can also be uh, th thought about as marketing. Because a lot of businesses, a lot of, uh, uh, actually every business markets and promotes their products and services, and consumption would be the factors that uh, make people buy uh, or consume products. I is investments, and this can be uh, said to, uh, this can said to be, this can be said to be uh, finance because this is where you're making financial decisions. So, and exports minus imports is obviously, as we know, international business or international trade. So there's lots and lots of different ways to interpret this, but this is an interesting way if you think about all the business sectors that are all present in this, economy, uh, in this equation. Uh, so how does the economy uh, and the stock market relate to each other? Uh, well, first of all, you've got to analyze uh, the economy uh, in, great, in great detail. So you've got to understand GDP, you've got to understand unemployment, you've got to understand interest rates and so on. So all the factors that go into understanding uh, or, or doing economic analysis, so you should do that uh, as the first component of analysis. And then you turn your attention to the stock market. So there's lots of famous stock markets. In Canada, of course, we've got the uh, TSX, which is the Toronto Stock Exchange. You've got Montreal Exchange. You've got Alberta Stock Exchange. Uh, and then the US, of course, New York Stock Exchange uh, and Chicago Stock Exchange are the two uh, biggest ones. Um, and uh, so you would analyze the stock market data. Thirdly, you would analyze industries. So uh, which industry you would like to invest in or you have an interest in. So for example, technology, cars, uh, housing, uh, mining, these are all industries. Um, and then after you've narrowed your analysis down to industries, you would then uh, analyze individual companies. Um, once you have narrowed it down to three, four, five, ten companies, you would then make an investment decision. So that's the process, that's a simple process of making decisions. Uh, and of course, remember once the decision is made, then the real work starts to maintain your, your investments and portfolios. Um, moving on to the business cycle, the business cycle has four stages that we normally uh, associate businesses with. Uh, you've got expansion, you've got peak, re recession, and trough. So uh, at uh, the period of expansion, you can see that um, you have um, high, high corporate profits, you have increased uh, jobs, you also have um, um, reduced bankruptcies, and inflation is stable, interest rates are usually stable or, going, uh, or increasing. So in the, the state of expansion, economy is doing well, companies are doing well, people are doing well. And then you have, then you hit the peak. You don't really know when you hit the peak um, because you only know it afterwards that yes, that was the peak that we hit. Because then you start to go into a recession. And peak doesn't last long, maybe two months, three months, and then you are in a recession, state of recessionary uh, economic development where you have at least six months of negative growth consecutively and um, 
uh, there's, there's different activities that go on. The government takes measures to uh, protect you, but at the same time, corporate profits are shrinking, and um, because the economy does not do so well, companies do, do not do so well, and so that uh, also translates into individual uh, well-being as well. Uh, and then you hit to the bottom, which is trough. Again, trough, you don't know when you're going to be in trough or while you're in trough. You only know when you are recovering or expanding again. So trough is the bottom. It's, you know, uh, where you have now hit the rock bottom. Uh, and there's lots of drop in prices and, and salaries. People may have higher rate of bankruptcies. Uh, that's not, you know, the best time uh, economically speaking. So uh, that was just uh, an explanation on the business cycle. Now, if we turn our attention to how the business cycle and the stock market are related, so some of the conclusions or correlations are uh, listed on this slide. Stock prices lead the economy. There are three different types of indicators, leading, coincident, and lagging. So a stock market is the major leading indicator, which means that everything happens in the stock market in advance of, what, uh, of the economy. So stock markets are about six months ahead of the economy. So whatever is happening in the stock market today, ch chances are that in the next six months, that will translate into the economy, um, generally speaking. Stock market is the most sensitive indicator of the economy because people's direct investments and pensions are, uh, and, and other forms of uh, wealth are related to stock markets. It is very, very sensitive to information and to movement. Stock market cycles tend to lead business cycles. So if the stock market cycle is similar to the business cycle in this case, uh, it would be six months ahead at all times. So if you want to know when you're coming out of the recession, any recession, you would then follow the stock market and see when that actually comes out and of the recessionary stages, the economy will also come out. But remember, it is not a perfect forecast. These are just analysis and conclusions um, that uh, a lot of uh, professors and a lot of researchers have come up with. None of them are perfect, of course. There are a lot of other factors that affect the aggregate economy. The word aggregate means total or overall economy. So you have global economic factors, which a country or a co company does not have any control over. Uh, so there are several examples. You've got global turmoil in Russia, uh, in the late 90s, uh, 1990s, and then of course the financial crisis of 2006, 7, 8. That is still um, that is still uh, uh, chugging along in, in a lot of the world. Uh, you also have other factors such as wars, um, and you also have a lot of other factors such as um, the interest rates and so on. So interest rates um, are a direct.